Welcome to a Rin channel and welcome back to Sheet Metal Chorus. We've now learned quite a lot of the Sheet Metal features and hopefully they aren't just all blending into one. As we get further into this, some of them will be used less regularly than others and Cassette is probably one of these which is quite specialized. Now Cassette is another term that comes from clothing and fabric making, sort of like the hem feature was. Traditionally, a Cassette is a triangular piece of material that's added at the seams where two parts join and this adds strength. This term has now moved over to metalwork, and there's actually a couple of things that fabricators might understand by the term cassette, so we're just going to clarify what it means in solidworks shape metal. Often with metalwork like welding or framing, a cassette is an extra piece of metal, usually triangular, that's added to give extra strength to the structure. So we might see something like this on a bridge or framing on a roof. This is known as a cassette plate, and we might see something like this at the bottom of a metal lamppost or sign and it basically gives extra strength to the joint at the bottom there there's more area to weld around we might also see something like this on the bicycle frame also to give more extra strength however having explained those cassettes the cassettes in solidworks here metal are slightly different again they usually look something like this so it's basically a ridge that's pressed into a band and it carries out the same function as those other cassettes in that it adds strength the cassette tool is quite simple to use really, so let's open our existing part and then delete any extra features as usual. So we've just got the base flange. To add the cassette, first we need a bend to put it across. So we're gonna add a 90 degree edge flange. It doesn't have to be 90 degrees, but we'll just use that for this example. Select the edge flange and let's add an edge flange on the short edge. I'm going to go 90 degrees and 50 millimeters, but it could be any size or angle really. The tool itself is quite easy to use. First, we'll go on the sheet metal tab, and then we'll select sheet metal cassette, which is here. Firstly, we need to select the position of the cassette. If we hover over this first box, it says select a bend face or two flat faces. So we can zoom in, and just select the bend directly. We see we get a preview of the cassette there. Or we can select two flat faces of the bend. The faces that we select can be either inside or outside the bend but they can be a combination. So we can't have one inside and one outside. It doesn't let me choose that selection. Now we can set the position exactly. This is a reference line that shows the alignment of the cassette. It's picked up automatically, and usually it sets the cassette as perpendicular to the band. But we could also sketch in an angled line if we want a cassette that wasn't perpendicular to the band. But that would be really quite a rare feature, so usually it would just be perpendicular. And then this point in purple, we can see here, is where along the line the cassettes will be placed. So that point has been picked automatically, is this purple one in the corner. And we can see we are offset 10 millimeters from that, so we are not right in the corner there. If I uncheck the offset box, we can see the offset is removed. So now the cassette is centered on the purple dot. And then we can turn back on the offset. And we can change the distance. We can also flip the direction. If we flip in this direction, the preview is not gonna appear because there's no material over there, so we can't actually mix a cassette over there. If we had selected the midpoint here, then we could choose either direction for the offset. We can also clear this position box. And we can place that point anywhere we want, but it needs to be on a set point. So we can't just click a random place on the line, it has to be at the end or in the midpoint. We could also draw a sketch before we add the cassette and put a point at a specific place on the line. But usually it's easier just to use the end or the midpoint and then just offset the cassette by the correct amount to get the position that we want. Then it's really just a case of setting the parameters we want for the cassette. If we go all the way down to the bottom here on the left and we turn on the full preview, we'll be able to see how these parameters change the preview. Firstly, let's look at these lower ones. This is the width of the cassette so we can see as I change that, it changes the width in the preview. This is the thickness, which by default is just the thickness of the material. And again, we can see as I change that, it changes the preview. Then there are some further options here at the bottom. So we specifically select them and turn them on. So draft adds an angle to the cassette, like so. We can see there's a slight angle on the sides there. This next one is a fillet on the internal corners, and then this one's pretty similar, it's a fillet on the outer corners. 
So by default, those three options are switched off, but we can turn them on if we need them. Then moving back up, this is the actual size of the gusset. We've got a lot of control here. And if you look at this little drawing, it can help we understand what we are changing. By default, the indent is symmetrical. So we can see, as I change this size, it changes on the preview. But we can also set our own height and base depth, if we prefer by looking at this drawing up here. So we can set the size T1 and T2, that's the length of the sides of this triangle. Or we can set length of one of the sides and then the angle. But we can only choose two of the three of these at the same time, because the first two dimensions drive the third one. So if we change the height, then the angle is gonna change automatically. And if we change the angle, obviously the base size is gonna change as well. We can also click this button to flip the dimensions if we need to. Then finally down here, we can add a fully rounded cassette or a straight cassette. Usually the tool that makes these is quite rounded because it deforms the metal quite a lot. So if we've got a rounded smooth tool, it's less likely to damage the edges of the metal. We can also set square and then fill it the edges as needed, so it doesn't have to be fully round or fully square. We do have the option to go in between those two a little bit. So set whichever options we like and then press OK. And now the cassette is formed there. We can also now edit the feature as normal in the feature 3. And we can change any of those parameters. We can also expand the feature and we can edit this underlying sketch to change the shape of the cassette. So we could change the sketch to something like this, and that would change the cassette's shape. Now, one thing to note is that when we flatten the part, like this, by default the cassette isn't shown. That's because it's usually added by a specialist tool. But we can override this setting by folding the part up again, and then editing the feature, the cassette feature. And then I'm gonna go down to the bottom. And turning on the flat pattern visibility here. So first we'll have to click override document settings. And then we can choose either the profile or the center or both. I'm going to add both just to show us what they are. So I've checked both of those boxes. Press OK. It looks the same in the folded state. But now if we press flatten. We can see this point is the center of the cassette, and then this slope is the actual profile of it. These details can help with adding the exact position to our drawing, but we probably need an extra note on that, with things like the cassette tool details, like the depth, and so on. So to recap, cassettes are a ridge that's pressed into a band, and this strengthens or shifts the band. They are pretty easy to add in SOLIDWORKS, just select the sheet metal cassette tool, and then either choose two faces or a band. Set the band reference if needed, but this is usually set automatically, then also set the position. By default, this will be one of the endpoints of the reference line, and then we can offset by whatever amount we want, but we can also select our own point. Then it's just a case of setting our parameters, such as the cassette depth, the angle if needed, any rounded edges, and the width. And then we can choose whether this will show in the flat pattern, by default it won't. In the next video, we'll have a quick look at the vent feature. This isn't specifically a sheet metal feature. We can use it in normal solid modeling, but it can be very useful in sheet metal because vents are pretty common in sheet metal parts. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you like. I hope it can be a little helpful and useful.